Welcome to a one slide show from Bioscience O'Clock. Today we are talking about pigment production, sun tanning, and variations in melanin content among individuals. The skin is the largest organ in our body. It is the first barrier against chemical and physical agents, against pathogens, and UV rays. The skin is divided into three layers, epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis. Today's focus is on the epidermis, which is the most superficial layer of the skin and consequently the most exposed to the environment. Keratinocytes are the most abundant cell in the epidermis. One of the main proteins they produce is keratin. The other cell type we need to introduce is the melanocytes which are located in the deepest layer of the epidermis. From there, they extend their dendrites to connect to the surrounding keratinocytes, which in turn regulate the melanocytes. One melanocyte is able to connect to up to 36 keratinocytes. Melanocytes produce a pigment called melanin. There are two types of melanin. Eumelanin, which is a brown-black pigment, and pheomelanin, which is a red-yellow pigment. These two types of melanin differ in color, chemical composition, and physical properties. Melanocytes synthesize melanin in organelles called melanosomes, which resemble small sacs. Depending on the type of melanin that is synthesized, the melanosomes are either eumelanosomes or pheomelanosomes. The first step in the synthesis of both types of melanin is the hydroxylation of the tyrosine amino acid. The subsequent reactions are different. The synthesis of eumelanin involves the enzymes, tyrosinase-related protein 1 and 2 or TRP1 and TRP2. Pheomelanin synthesis depends on the availability of cysteine amino acid. Once the melanin has been synthesized in the melanosomes, the melanosomes migrate through the melanocyte dendrites to the keratinocytes, where they form a cluster over the exposed side of the keratinocyte nucleus, resembling an umbrella in order to protect it from the UV rays. What happens when we get tan? First, immediate pigment darkening, and then persistent pigment darkening occurs. The first one is of a grayish color and occurs in the first minutes after exposure. The second one is a brownish color and occurs hours after exposure. Both depend on UVA rays and are the result of pre-existent melanin photooxidation. After pigment darkening comes delay tanning. UV rays stimulate the production of the alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone in the keratinocytes. This binds to its receptor onto the melanocytes, the melanocortin receptor 1, MC1R. This will in turn start the synthesis of new eumelanin as a means to protect the cells from the harmful UV rays. However, this protection is very limited. Melanin is the skin's pigment, but which melanin-related factors affect our skin tone? In a study published in 2002, a group of scientists measured the total melanin content, as well as the eumelanin and pheomelanin in samples obtained from people from different ethnic backgrounds. Each ethnic group had 8 to 10 participants. The ethnicities were African, Indian, Mexican, Chinese, and European. They used biopsies from the dorsal forearms as photoexposed skin and from the volar upper arm as photoprotected skin. They found that the total content of melanin meaning both eumelanin and pheomelanin together, 
is higher in groups with darker skin tones than those with lighter skin tones. The quantities are micrograms of melanin per milligrams of epidermis. In the same study, they compare the quantity of eumelanin in the photoexposed samples versus the photoprotected samples among groups and among the same individual. They observed that the groups with darker skin tone had higher content of eumelanin than those with lighter skin tone. Also, in the same individual, there is a difference in the eumelanin content between the photoexpose, which is higher, and the photoprotected skin. Although it is not shown here, pheomelanin content is enriched in the latter skin tones compared to the darker skin tones. They concluded that not only the amount of total melanin, but also the composition of melanin is important for the regulation of the skin tone. Now, you know a little bit more about the science behind your skin tone. Remember, the tanning acts as a defense mechanism of your skin against UV rays. So help it by wearing sunscreen and avoiding unnecessary sun exposure for long periods of time. If you enjoyed the video, like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until the next one slide show.